atherosclerosis really indicates certainly risk for coronary disease, but as we know now, it's all-cause mortality and really all chronic disease. Cancer, Alzheimer's, uh, just almost all of what has made, has made the Western world ill. And it turns out uh, what's important is the total amount, or what we call the plaque burden, of arteriosclerosis. And that's reflected by the coronary calcium and the coronary calcium score. Now, the main cause of coronary calcium is lifestyle. And it's diabetes, but before we ever develop diabetes, it's pre-diabetes and what I would call pre-pre-diabetes. And again, it starts with insulin resistance, particularly from the change of the Western diet, um, as well as genetic uh, predispositions. And the high insulin uh, turns the sugar content and the bad carb content into fat in our liver. The fat overflows to obesity, mainly visceral obesity. And the fat also overflows from the liver uh, into the bloodstream, increasing triglycerides, eventually decreasing HDL, and causing small LDL and HDL particles, which cause atherosclerosis. And because of the salt retention blocking nitric oxide, we also have high blood pressure. The interesting thing that I've learned relatively recently is this all occurs before we have abnormal oral glucose tolerance or hemoglobin A1C. So we're getting sick years before our blood sugar components, our blood sugar parameters are abnormal. And we know fitness, sedentary behavior, sleep, tobacco, chronic stress, all contribute to this. But it all starts many, many years before the blood sugars are abnormal. And then what's often ignored is we have a whole host of primary non-lifestyle uh, genetic factors. <music>